So, uh, as you can see here, that Chris finished this uh, photograph, and I thought that when we change chairs, you had time to resolve this difficult decision problem. What is more beneficial, to have some food and drink, or to read the book by Ian Jordan on decision and uncertainty? So um, I continue, and uh, I present two other um, cases of uh, decision analysis, posterior and pre-posterior, and I also give again very brief definition of value information in the context of pre-posterior analysis. So um, next uh, type of analysis, this is posterior analysis. And the difference between uh, posterior analysis and prior analysis presented by Chris is that in this case, the decision maker gets uh, new information from experiment or inspection, but the decision about whether to carry out this inspection is outside the decision process. So the decision maker gets the information, but he is not involved in decision about the experiment. So in this case, the only difference that using this uh, new information or outcome of experiment, which is denoted here as ZK, he, can uh, he or she can update these prior probabilities and uh, find posterior probabilities. So uh, notation here that prior probabilities we denote as P prime and posterior probabilities is P double prime and they are conditional on this new information. In order to do that, uh, we use this bias theorem and this is very straightforward. Uh, additional information which should be known in this case, the so-called likelihood functions which um, describe the probability of getting this experiment outcome given certain the state of, given the certain state of the structure which we consider. So after that, the decision process is very similar. First, we calculate uh, expected utilities for all possible actions, and um, in this case, the expectation operation is carried out with respect to posterior probabilities, not prior probabilities. So we get uh, these expected utilities for all possible actions, and then we should select the action, A asterisk, which leads to the maximum utility. And this is the end of the decision process. So once again, I uh, would like to show this full tree because pre-posterior analysis is multi-stage decision analysis. So in this case, the de uh, decision maker should make two decisions. First, to decide if uh, to carry out experiment or inspection and what type of inspection to carry out, and then about actions which should be undertaken, for example, maintenance actions. So this uh, pre-posterior analysis can be done in two forms, extensive form and normal form. So I'll start with uh, explanation about this extensive form of analysis. So in extensive uh, form of analysis starts with assumption that inspection and its outcome are known. So it's basically backward analysis, so we start from the right end of the decision tree, and then we go back to its starting point. So first we assume that uh, experiment or inspection and its outcome are known, and by this we reduce the problem to posterior analysis. So for given um, inspection and its outcome, we need to find the maximum expected utility. So once again, based on this uh, assumed information which we know, we can update prior uh, probabilities for the structural states, and then for each combination of uh, inspection and its outcome, we calculate maximum expected utilities. So it's exactly like in posterior analysis. But the difference, of course, that we don't know what inspection has been selected and what, was it, uh, what has been its outcome. So outcomes that they are, once again, uncertain parameter, 
or random variable. So once again, we need to apply the expectation operation in order to calculate expected utilities for different um, inspections. And for that, we once again need some new information, which is uh, represented by probabilities of experiment outcomes, Z. So for each experiment, there can be obviously different probabilities. So uh, after we formulated these probabilities, we carry out this expectation operation with respect to these probabilities, and we get uh, expected probabilities for each possible inspection. Next step, obviously, once again, to select the maximum expected utility and the experiment or inspection which corresponds to it. And this is the last step. So this is um, the way how this extensive form of pre-posterior analysis is carried out. Now we consider uh, this normal form. And in this case, the analysis is carried out forward from the starting point on the left-hand side of the tree to its right end. And the first step here is to formulate this, this so-called decision rule. So basically, we need to assign optimal action A to each possible outcomes of our inspection. And if you to think about it, it's quite similar to the first uh, step of uh, uh, extensive form of pre analysis. We just don't need to calculate utilities. Basically, we have all possible outcomes, and for each possible outcome, we should select action which would lead to the maximum utility. So that's the way how to, we set this decision rule. And after that, uh, we can uh, carry out analysis, taking into account now that instead of um, actions, we consider decisions which are related to uh, inspection outcomes. And information which we need for this analysis are exactly the same as for posterior analysis. We need to know prior distributions of the state of the structure, P prime theta, and we need to know likelihoods or probabilities of observing some experimental outcomes given a certain state of the structure. The difference is that we need these uh, likelihoods for each inspection, possible inspection type. So after that, we need to calculate expected utility for each combination of uh, inspection, selected inspection and decision D. And uh, then for, from all calculated utilities for these strategies or combinations, we select the maximum one and the strategy ED, inspection plus this decision, gives us the most optimal uh, decision. So uh, these are two forms. Uh, according to Rafer and Schleifer, for the relation of value of information, extensive form is more suitable. And uh, concerning normal form, for example, in uh, one of his publications, Michael Faber showed that it can be quite useful when we consider risk-based inspection and maintenance planning. So uh, now value of information. So one of the main applications of pre-posterior analysis is uh, the calculation of the value of information. And first we uh, define the value of information for particular outcome or for particular piece information Z. So as you have seen in this uh, extensive form of pre-posterior analysis, for each uh, actions and the states of the structure, we calculated this uh, maximum expected utilities um, U asterisk. So these are maximum expected utilities for any combination of E and experiment, its outcome Z. So now if we consider for the outcome Z, the difference between this utility and the maximum utility which we can calculate by prior analysis without any experiments and outcomes, this will represent the value of information for this particular piece of information Z. Uh, the other definition, more general definition, was already presented by Henning in terms of benefits. Here I present the same in terms of uh, utilities. So basically, if uh, 
with the node uh, u naught asterisk the maximum uh, utility obtained by prior analysis and by u uh, one asterisk the maximum utility obtained by pre posterior analysis. In this case, it's in the extensive form formulation. The difference between these two utilities will give us the value of information. This is also called expected value of sample information because we take into account that at the time we estimate it, we don't know nothing about experiment, its outcomes, and the state of the structure. There are other uh, definitions of value information. So conditional value of sample information, it's very similar. You know, the only difference that it's related to the situation when we estimate the information after the experiment has been carried out and we know its outcome. So it's conditional value of sample information. There is also such a, a notion as perfect information. The idea of perfect information that this information enables us to establish the exact state condition of the structure. So, and for perfect information, we can also calculate its expected value and conditional value. And these uh, uh, values for perfect information, they're basically upper limits for our value of information. And that's it.